said, I am Michael Callahan. I want to point out that I'm a lead, a lead software engineer with Disney. I'm not the lead. There's a lot of leads here. Um, these are a couple of ways you can get a hold of me. Feel free to email me or uh, follow me and chat me up on Twitter. So I've written a card game with Ionic Framework. And the folks at Ionic thought it would be kind of cool to share it with you. This isn't the first time I've tried or I've written a game with Ionic. I've done it a few times, mostly successfully, and you can see four of them here. Interestingly enough, one of the first reactions I get when I tell someone that I write games with Ionic is, yes, that's the reaction. The next one I get is, well, why are you using Ionic instead of, you know, XYZ framework of choice? And I have four, three and a half reasons. One, Ionic is familiar with me. I've been using it since version 0 0.6 or so. I find it very easy to develop with Ionic. I love the attractive components, and quite frankly, why not? So the card game that I was decided to write, you may or may not have heard of it. It's called Spot It. I believe it's called Dobble in Europe. And the idea is you've got 55 cards in the deck. Each card has three symbols on it. And the goal of the game is to find the matching symbol between your card and another card. As you can see here, the, uh, the two cards have a, a heart in common. The cool thing is, there really is, if you pick any two cards, there is exactly one and only one common symbol. And I've always wondered how that works, the mathematics behind it. Um, but I'm really bad at it. So whenever I play with my family, I come in last. So I thought it would be kind of cool to build a, a game in Ionic that would allow me to practice essentially. And I wanted it to be responsive, different uh, sizes. I wanted to have some decent animation and some sound effects. So you might be wondering how does this work? So uh, I've gotten permission from Mike to spend the next hour or so discussing the complex math behind the game. No, not really. I've read a whole bunch of articles about how it works, and honestly, I still don't get it. But if you think about it visually, it kind of starts to make sense. So here's a hypothetical deck with three cards or three symbols per card. So every colored line on this graph represents one card. So you can see where the numbers of each symbol are. So in order to build a deck with exactly one symbol in common for any two cards, you need seven cards. And it looks like seven symbols, and I believe that's correct. So it's kind of easy to understand with small numbers. But as you can imagine, it gets a lot more complicated as you add more symbols per card. So at four symbols, you, you need 13 cards. Now at 12 symbols, you need 132 cards. But look at that last one. You could hypothetically build a, a deck that had 600 unique symbols per card. But that would require almost 360,000 cards in your deck. The computer doesn't care. The algorithm doesn't care. But your users probably would. Uh, by the way, it took my M1 MacBook more than two minutes to generate that deck with 600 symbols per card. Probably not something you want to do. So I needed to decide where to stop. Computer might not care, but my players definitely would. And besides that, I need to find enough unique symbols. If you can imagine trying to find 600 unique symbols, that'd be painful. So I decided that 12 would be my max. OK, so that's enough theory. Time to start talking about the game design. From a technical design of the app, it obviously needs appropriate images laid out on the screen in a logical pattern. I needed the Dobble algorithm, which I'll show you in a moment. I need to be able to let the player configure the game as they want to play it. I need to generate a deck. I need scoring. I wanted animations and sound. And finally, I wanted a way for the users to share their game on social media. It's a lot, but I think we can get through it. So you might be wondering how I got this to work, given that I don't really understand the math. Fortunately, there's a lot of folks who do. I found a version of the algorithm implemented in pure JavaScript. 
I'm not going to show it here other than this brief screenshot. Because how it works really isn't critical to the game itself. The important thing to understand that given a positive integer, that is a prime number plus one, the algorithm will generate a two-dimensional array of integers. After that, it's simply a matter of assigning each integer to an image. So the first thing I decided to tackle was the new game configuration. It's a simple screen with a few input fields. The game's name is a randomly generated slug, three-word slug, which I'll explain in a few minutes. Next is the difficulty, four, six, eight, or 12 symbols per card. And I decided to provide the user with the opportunity to choose a smaller portion of the whole deck because somebody might not want to go through 130 cards in their deck, but they want the challenge of the 12 symbols per card. Once the game is configured, I have a start button that lets you begin the new game. So the way that works is that each input value becomes part of the application's route. The first part of the route is the game to be played itself. For now, I only have one game, so it's currently hard-coded to solitaire. Following the game is the difficulty level indicated by the number of symbols per card. Next is the slug, which I also call the game's name. And finally, the size of the deck, which I'll explain sh uh, shortly. So any unique game can be identified and recreated using the full URL with those values. So now I have to generate a deck from that information. I decided to create a deck service to keep from having to duplicate that deck creation logic in any future game that I might create. But there is still some duplication. Injecting a deck service at least means I've abstracted that code my game doesn't know how a deck is generated, but it does need to know some of these details. The biggest drawback here is that if I ever change how the routing uh, works or how the deck is generated, any game that I write in the future would have to be modified. So what if I didn't have to repeat that code in every game? You already know it's Ionic, but I'm also using Angular. So I decided to here to use a deck, uh, a resolver, a route resolver. So I created a resolver called deck info. And then I added the resolve line to the route for the solitaire game. Here's the route resolver implementation. It doesn't really do much. It's not complicated, just a single function called resolve. The resolve function grabs the current route and the snapshot of the router state that I don't actually need. Then I got the symbols and the slug from the route parameters and the, it's not shown here, but the deck size. And I use that information to build a deck. As you can see, I'm calling the deck service here. So now instead of injecting the deck service into each game, each potential future game, it's injected once into the deck resolver and the deck resolver then injects a fully formed shuffle deck ready to, uh, to be played. So now to grab a deck, every game only needs a single line of code. So almost all of that duplication that I was worried about is gone. So you may be wondering your, uh, to yourself, what's with that slug, the game name? So the, to me, the slug equals replayability. The game name gets hashed, turned into a numeric value, injected into a randomizer as a seed value, which results in identical gameplay. And I'll show you that in a moment. JavaScript's math library, the random library, doesn't support seed values. So I had to look elsewhere. I found these two NPM libraries to generate the random slug and then a seedable random library that I could use to inject that slug. So whenever the player is about to start a new game, I first have the application generate a random three-word slug using the code you see here. I'm just going to take three random nouns from its library and put them together with a hyphen. And I just noticed an unfortunate naming choice for my function. I'm calling it generate slug, which is called the slug library generate slug function. It works, but unfortunate naming. So at the beginning of every game, that slug is used to create a numeric hash. That's the hash code function in the middle. 
the value sent to the randomizer to seed its random number generator. Finally, I expose a shuffle method that takes any array and shuffles it with the now seeded randomizer. The end result is that everybody who plays the same game with the same URL will get the same game. Make sense? Okay, so now I have the algorithm I can build a deck. Now I need some pictures. I'm not an artist. I don't play one on TV, nothing. But whenever I need images to use in an application, I go to pixabay.com. I spent a few hours on Pixabay looking for graphics that I could use as symbols for my cards. I wanted images that would work at any resolution and background color, so I looked for SVG files that were transparent and roughly squarish. The algorithm said that I needed at least 130 images, and I think I ended up with 137. Once I have those images, it's time to create the card layout. For the solitaire game, I present two cards side by side, shown here, previous card and current card. And I see you're rolling your eyes. Naming things is hard, so don't give me any grief over that. Seeing another opportunity for potential reuse, I created a custom component called app double card. And I let it handle how the symbols are laid out on each card. The double card itself is rendered with an ion card component. I want, you know, I'm building an ionic app. I want to stick with ion wherever possible. So for now, inside the ion card's content, I simply loop over all the symbols of the card, wrapping each with a div and placing it inside an ion icon with a click handler. I've gone back and forth on the layout. I used an ion grid for a while, and then I've also tried custom CSS, which is what I'm doing now. And honestly, I'm not super happy with where it's landed. And I'll probably revisit the IAM grid in an upcoming iteration. By the way, did you know that you can actually use an SVG file as an ION icon source? I didn't when I started this project. I do now, and it's a very handy feature. I also want to point out this attribute here, app random rotation. The Spotted game lays out its symbols at various sizes and rotations on its cards. And I wanted to replicate at least the, the rotation part of that to add a little bit more of a challenge. That seems like a really good use case for a directive. So any element that includes the app random rotation attribute will cause this directive to be executed. As you can see here, all I do is grab the element itself and set a random rotate transform directly on its style. This is what it ends up looking like at runtime. Rotating each image a random number of degrees makes spotting the duplicate images a lot harder than you might imagine. Have you spotted it yet? It's the cardboard box. Next up, I needed to figure out how to score. I tried a number of ideas finally uh, for a while back and forth on things and finally set it on these rules. I'm still on the fence about whether to have the turn expire and automatically advance. For now, I don't bother. So to calculate the score for each pair of cards, I compute the total time it took the user to find a match in milliseconds. Then I calculate the max possible score, which is 1,000 times the number of symbols on the card, less 500 for each time the user clicked the wrong selection and then I subtract the time elapsed. Finally, because I don't want to appear heartless, I make sure the player can't get less than 50 points on a card. Next up, I wanted an unobtrusive means of flashing the score very briefly. The player might be interested, but shouldn't have to take any action, and it shouldn't get in the way of, a game, of any of the gameplay. So to me, this is a perfect use case for an Ion Toast which means I needed to inject the Toast controller into my game. And as the next pair of cards is being dealt, I briefly show the Toast at the top of the screen for about a second and a half. That's just the right amount of time to display the score for that pair of cards while the cards are animating out and back in. And it satisfies my criteria of being brief, unobtrusive, and requiring no user action. That brings us to the card animations themselves. 
one of my motivations for writing this game is because I had heard and read a little bit about ionic animations and I wanted to see how it works. If you haven't used it before, they will use the web, API, the web animation API by default, falling back to CSS animations if necessary. But to the developer, it's a single API, which makes things really nice. I specifically wanted to implement three different types of animation. One for incorrect selections, which you can see here, hopefully that animation is coming through. One for correct selections, which is similar but shorter, and it applies to the symbol on both cards, not just the one you clicked on. And finally, I wanted to animate the cards out and back in, making it really obvious to the player that a new pair of cards is being dealt. When the user clicks on a symbol that doesn't have a match, I pass a CSS selector matching its file name to my animation service where I've implemented a get incorrect animation function. And then I play. That function calls directly into the Ionic animation library to create a new animation on that CSS selector. The animation is a transform of the scale of the object from one or 100% to 0 0.8, 80%. Each transformation takes 50 milliseconds. The animation should happen five times, that's the iteration, after which it scales back to one. In that last line, you can see the easing of ease in and out, which prevents the animation from looking too robotic. Play correct animation is similar Again, I pass the name of the file of, of the uh, selected tap symbol. For the correct animation, instead of scaling the image down to 80%, I scale it up to 125% over 200 milliseconds, and I only do it once. And then I scale it back down to one with the same easing. Unlike the symbol animations, the card animations are configured and can be configured ahead of time. Each card is wrapped in a div, and those divs are never removed from the DOM, so I can set these animations and leave them alone. So I'll show you how they're used before how they're defined. At the end of a turn, immediately after the correct symbol is selected, I play the exit animation. I have to await it because all animations return promises. Then I check to see if there are any more cards, which I'm not showing that code. If there are, I advance the deck. For good measure, I call stop on the exit animation, and then I play the enter animation. I call the exit animation east-west exit animation with the idea that I might add a north-south animation someday. Here you can see two discrete animations. One applies to the div that matches selector west. That's just a CSS selector that gets passed in. It translates the entire div horizontally, 500 pixels, 500% to the left. The other animation called exit east does the opposite. Those two animations are then used to create a compound animation with a duration of half a second. With the same easing function I used before. What's significant about this is that by combining these two animations to create a new one, I can play the new one, which will then play the combination simultaneously. If you've ever tried to implement simultaneous animations with CSS, you probably appreciate how difficult that can be. But Ionic animation just kind of does it for you. The enter animation is the reverse of the exit animation, except for some reason, the translation is only 200% in either direction instead of 500%. I honestly don't remember why I did that. When it's all done, everything works together smoothly and seamlessly. But what good is a great score if you can't share it with your friends and challenge them to beat you? With the example of simple games like Wordle as my inspiration, I wanted to give the player a way to share the results of the game. At the end of each game, this sheet modal automatically appears. As you can see, it contains the final score, a call to action, the URL to the exact game just played, 
and some handy social sharing icons. To implement the social sharing, I created a game over component, placing it inside the direct the declarative bottom sheet ion modal, which was introduced in Ionic 6. This one can be specified directly in your markup without needing to inject the modal controller service. As you can see, I specify my custom game over component inside an ng template as part of the ion modal. What makes it a bottom sheet modal is the array of breakpoints and the initial breakpoint attribute on the modal. The breakpoints property is simply an array which states the breakpoint that each sheet will snap to as the user swipes up or down. As for how the sharing itself is done, I found an NPM library called NGX Share Buttons. It's far more powerful than what I needed, and I'm really only using its share button directive on the IAM component. So all I needed to do was provide some attributes, and the directive does the rest. The share button attribute tells the library which social media to use, Facebook, Twitter, etc. The description is a message to be shared on social media, which is that message you saw earlier in the with the name game name and score. The URL is a direct link to the game the player just finished. That'll be posted to social media as is where possible. And finally, the title is the message title, also used in the social media post where appropriate. On the component side, I simply set up an array of the share buttons that I wanted to show. And this is what it looks like when you share to Twitter. Those images come from an open graph and Twitter card tags that I put in the applications index.html file. I did have a wild idea that I could put, replace all those SVG images with emojis, which would then enable me to show the actual symbols used in the, in the social media post. But for now, I'm happy with the way it works. So that's it. That's the whirlwind tour through the code. Uh, if you want to see the code itself, it is available at this GitHub repo. Um, you can also play the game at the top URL there. And one thing I didn't mention is the app is available as a fully installable PWA. It includes all the appropriate configuration, manifests, icons, and splash screens to be installed on both Android and iOS devices. It supports offline gameplay and auto updates, just like you'd expect it to from any uh, mobile app. Angular and Ionic are the perfect combination to build and distribute such PWAs, which I cover in more detail in this book, which is available free of charge to anybody who hits that URL. And finally, if you need more information, take a screenshot. I believe they're going to be posting the, uh, these URLs too. If you need to get a hold of me, ask questions. And finally, finally, I also have a book on developing Ionic framework mobile apps. I call it Idea to App Store. It's essentially the same workshop that I've been doing for the past year or so. And you can get that with a 33% off coupon code at the URL here. Thank you for your attention.